Okay, let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks we can meet via Zoom to study the chronology of the Book of Kings and the history of the kings in the Old Testament. And uh, I pray that you can guide us to correct us where we are wrong. May this study be to your glory. Help me to present it in a manner which is pleasing to you, Father. And uh, we ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So this is just like an overview of the the length of the time involved in the kings. So the period of the kings of Judah, from the dividing of the kingdom and the beginning of the reign of Rehoboam to the death of Zedekiah, is a period of about 391 years and six months. When we total up the years of the kings, it comes to 393 years and six months. However, there is a, a two-year co-regency which needs to be taken into account. So I have just like a table here with a running total of the, the kings and the years associated with them and the references on the right side. And the um, So it comes down to Zedekiah, and we have about 393 years and six months. And uh, just going to discuss the co-regency quickly here. I have a diagram underneath this here as well. I can show it sort of helps to explain it a bit better. So this co-regency can be seen in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 16. It says, in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, so that's the northern kingdom, Jehoshaphat being then king of Judah, so Jehoshaphat still the king, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, began to reign. We have them both reigning here at the same time, so we have to work out how long they were both reigning together. and. Uh, so we can see that Joram, sometimes it's, he's called Jehoram. So it's, it's very sort of a, can be confusing if you're not familiar. Well, because you also have a king of Judah and a king of Israel, both called Joram or Jehoram. So it becomes real confusing sorting that out. It took me yes. quite a while originally. <clears throat> so he begins to reign in the 18th year Jehoshaphat. And then um, says there, now Jehoram, or Joram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and he reigned 12 years. And then Jehoshaphat reigned 20 and 5 years, and Jehoram began to co reign with his father, Jehoshaphat, in his 23rd year, being Joram's fifth year, becoming the sole king when his father died two years later. So if that doesn't make it clear, <laughs> uh, I have it here. So Jehoshaphat, he reigns 25 years. It mentions there in the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, Joram, the king of Israel, brother in the kingdom, he begins to reign, <clears throat> and then mentions that uh, this year co-regency begins in the fifth year of Joram. Okay, and then uh, then we can see that Jehoshaphat died when he was uh, after reigning twenty-five years. And so the math just we can work out that there's two years difference or sorry, a two-year period where 
Josepha and the son Corian. Now Usher had already worked this out, so mm -hmm. um, which is where I originally got it. But uh, even though Usher had worked it out, it still took a long time to figure out my uh, on my own. Yeah, so people can have the, the diagram there and the information just to to go over again if it's not fair there, but it's, it's pretty much can be seen. So there's another, um, like the backup for this year period of the Kings is the 390 years that we find in Ezekiel chapter four. But it says for the house of Israel, I think it is. So that could be confusing. It says for the house of, for Judah, they're given 40 years or 40 days a day for a year. And uh, for Israel, it's 390 years. Now that's to the siege of um, Jerusalem in uh, 587 BC. So when we when you go to, I think we'll, we'll cover this later on, I think as well. So I'm maybe not going into detail, but there's a 390 year period mentioned there in Ezekiel chapter four. And then there's a further year and a half until Jerusalem's destroyed and the siege ends. Mm -hmm. So you have a 391 year uh, and a half um, backed up scene there in, in the book of Ezekiel, which kind of clarifies this year, the, the reign of the kings. And, and as you sort of noted that these here kings, the years are given so that we can just total them up. Yeah, now one of the things um, when I had first worked this out, before I understood the prophecy of uh, Josiah, I had, had worked out that it must work that way. But uh, the problem that I had is I didn't understand why there was 390 years for Israel. That is, all I could discern is it was from the dividing of the kingdom in 977, and it reached to the beginning of the siege. But once I understood the prophecy of Josiah, then I understood what it was about. It wasn't about 390 years for Israel because Israel only exists for 256 years. Um, uh, I think it's, is that right? 256? Yeah, so one month. Yeah, so, um, but that it had to do with the prophecy of Josiah. Once I understood it was the prophecy of Josiah, then the 40 years made sense as well. So there was, and that's where people always had problems is they didn't know, do we add the 390 to the 40? What is the 390 representing? And why, why is there 40 uh, for Judah? What, what would be marking that? So there was all these problems that people had. And it was really the prophecy of Josiah that, that brought that together. So, mm -hmm. so we'll cover the, the prophecies of the 390 and the 40 years at the end of this document. Okay. Okay, so uh, the kings began in 977 BC, so that was covered in the previous document. Mm -hmm. So this year we're just starting from uh, the first date then mentioned after that, which is the fifth year of Jehoram, Je sorry, Rehoboam. Mm -hmm. And this is when uh, the king of Egypt comes and takes the shields from the house of the Lord and Rehoboam makes 300 brass shields to replace them and so forth. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, he started off well, Rehoboam, and then he, uh, after about three years, he uh, sort of began to go astray away from the Lord. And this was like a judgment. Mm -hmm. And then he dies in the 18th year of Jeroboam. And uh, I'll just scroll down a wee bit here because I have a, like a diagram here. Uh, Solomon, he, uh, he's 17 years old when Rehoboam is born. And then uh, Solomon becomes king the following year. 
but then it's, it's 58 years in until Jeroboam dies. And uh, he, Jer, uh, Rehoboam, he reigns. Is that right? Yeah, so that was, this is the 41 years that Solomon reigns. Or sorry, he reigns 40 years, but um, he begins to reign when he's 18, so then he reigns 40 years. So Solomon dies when he's 58. And then you have 17 years of Rehoboam's end, reign at the end of that. So just like a, a sort of, I don't know, it's like a mirror maybe. Um, I think uh, Solomon, he was promised long life, I think. He didn't ask for it, but because of his idolatry later on in his reign, I believe his life was probably cut short because of that. So, um, so we have here Abijah then reigns after Rehoboam for two years. Or sorry, it's three years. He reigns for, as it says. And uh, and then Jeroboam, he dies in the second year of Asa. After Asa takes over from Abijah. Well, I was just working on a diagram. I have it right, right at the bottom of this here uh, paper, just to, uh, to show you some of the issues when we get to chronology to do things. Mm -hmm. So this isn't marking the years or whatever, but it's just marking the, the, the information that we're given. Mm -hmm. So Jeroboam reigns 22 years, and it's a, Rehoboam reigns 17 years and dies in the 18th year of Jeroboam. This is what we're, we're told. And then Abijah, he reigns three years, but he dies in the 20th year of Jeroboam. If you're just going by the uh, this year count, you would think, well, maybe Abijah just reigned two years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Nadab, he reigns two years, but he begins in the second year of Asa. And then he dies in the third year of Asa. But then it says he reigns two years. So you would think maybe if you're just going to count this year period, it'd be like one year. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the third year to the 26th year, you would think maybe there's 23 years there for Basha, but then we're told Basha reigns 24 years. And then similarly with Ela, he reigns two years, but then you have the 26th to 27th year, just looks like one year between that period and, and the, concerning Ace's count mm -hmm. where, where it occurs. Yeah, can I comment and, on this? Uh, or I'll let you finish maybe this. Uh -huh. I'll let you finish this line and then I'll comment on this. Yeah, so, um, just I have Omri here, this is the 12 years, but it's, this is counting back. It, it mentions that Omri is uh, Northern Israel sort of divided between Omri and Tibni for a time. And then uh, it's in the 31st year of uh, Asa that Omri then reigns Israel um, so like solely. But uh, it's obviously the 12 years of Omri is counting back from uh, this year, 27th year. So it's uh, so that I have, maybe I have to sort of put a footnote in there, just saying that this year, 12 years actually begins here, not not in the 31st year, because there's only like, I think maybe seven years there. So, but go ahead, what's your comment? Well, so when you're looking at this, so when I first started studying the chronology of the Kings, um, obviously I ran into this problem and I looked at the solutions that were given. Now, um, obviously I came across Edwin Thiel, the Adventist chronologist, and um, 
soon found out his solution wasn't a very good one because it rejected many of the statements in the Bible on chronology. So, um, but one of the things is we know that some kings, that, that it's pretty clear that Israel and Judah are not counting their reigns at this period of time, uh, both from fall to fall or both from spring to spring. Uh, and, and it seems that Israel is counting spring to spring or, or fall to fall and Judah's counting spring to spring. But that still didn't account for everything. So one of the things that the conclusions I came to over a long period of time is that the kings of Judah are meant to be added together as that running total that you have. But the kings of Israel, one is they're constantly changing dynasties. So it's not like the, they're just carrying on the father's son ends up reigning. So sometimes they will, they will do sort of a, an inclusive count um, where um, that's not the case with the kings of Judah. It's more like a cardinal type of count. So in, in working that out, the, the way that I, I finally solved it was recognizing that Judah is meant to be counted and that Israel uh, has a little bit more leeway depending on how they count their reigns. So, and, and that's because this is showing the line of David or the line of Christ, his chronology. So that, that was the purpose of it. Once you take that into account, then all these other problems disappear. But Israel is useful because then you can, you can sort of match them. And that's where you can find, for instance, the two years between Jehoshaphat and Jehoram, mm -hmm. uh, where they co-reign. You can figure out how much they co-reign. But you can't really just add up the kings of Israel um, in the same way you can with the kings of Judah, because if you do, um, you, you won't recognize there's actually periods of time where no king is reigning in Israel. And, and that, so there's two, uh, two periods where there's, there isn't a king. So they call those, um, uh, what do they call it? I can't think what they call it. Um, interregnum, oh. right? An interregnum or something like that. So um, them two periods are? Um, well, there's the one period when Hoshea kills um, uh, Pekka. There's nine years where there's no king. And the other one is, um, where is that again? So the, the other one is, um, it's 11 years, and that's um, in the time of Zechariah, the king Zechariah. So there's 11 years there where there's no king. And, and you can figure that out if you if you take the time to do it. It's just um, uh, some people try to cut those out. That's what Thiel did is he doesn't accept those periods. So he tries to make the kings of Israel continuous. So he creates overlaps uh, in the reigns of the kings of Judah. The problem is he has some kings giving birth when they're like two years old or their wives giving birth when they're two years old. But you can't really shorten the kings of Judah as much as he does, but he just he just rejects many, many statements in the Bible in order to take off about 45 years of the kings of Judah. So. OK, so. Um, There mentions a, like a period of 10 years in the Assyrian where things were being quiet. Mm -hmm. um, and then and the end of that, there's war between Issa and Basha. Um, And in his 15th year, he seeks the Lord and he removes his mother from being queen. I think she was both in idolatry.
And then we have this year, period where Timney and Omri reign in different places in Israel. And then he dies in, in the 31st year of Asa, and then Omri reigns the rest of that time. So that would maybe be like four years where there's like a here dual competitive aspect to the Northern Kingdom. Yeah, so now when we count the kings of Northern Israel, we never count Tibni, right? Because we say there's 19 kings in uh, uh, Northern Israel. Mm -hmm. So um, how, come, how come we don't count him? Just because he's reigning at the same time as Omri? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And then they, they line these here up with the uh, the presidents of the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And then Judah was lined up with the presidents of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Right. But even within that, there's two um, there's two times Butler is president different times and there's three times James White is president. Yeah. So it's kind of a the same thing maybe with the presidents that the Grosvenor Cleveland. Um, but they seem to just count that as uh, separate. Yeah I know. Yeah I'm aware of that. But I just know originally I'd counted 20 kings of northern Israel and then um because I had counted Tibni. Okay, so um, there's probably things here we need to, to look at and tie out issues here that could be worked out, but I'm not too <laughs> sure. I'd, uh, uh, if, if, this, if, if, if this allows it, you know, so uh, we could just sort of see if uh, we come up with things. So, um, So uh, 2 Chronicles 16, in the 6th and 30th year, reign of Asa, have this here marked. So this is the second footnote, so I just want to see what this is about. I think there might be like an issue here with this one. In the 36th year of Asa, Basha, king of Israel, came up against Judah and built Ramah to the intent that he might let none go out or come in to Asa, king of Judah. So this verse would seem to contradict 1 Kings chapter 16, uh, verses 6 and 8. James Usher argues that the 36th year is referencing from when the kingdom divided in 977 BC and not Asa's 36th year, and therefore connects with the events of uh, 942 BC. So I think uh, Ash, Bash has actually been dead, apparently. Now we had marked that Basha dies in 931 BC. And then Ila reigns for two years. And then Omri reigns for 12 years. And it's um, during Omri's reign that says in the 36th year of Asa, king of Israel, it mentions that Basha is the king of Israel at their time. Rather than... Um, what would you would expect maybe Omri to be reigning then? Um, 
Sampasha died about 10 years prior mm -hmm. to that. So it's uh, maybe linking, that's uh, a difficult one to, uh, to rectify where it says Basha. We don't have any answers. Well, I, I mean, we could always speculate. Um, but I, I don't, I don't have a solution to it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When I run into some of those things, I just, uh, you know, maybe there's not enough information uh, to know what they're saying. But the thing is, they don't go about and try correcting it. And if, if they thought there was a problem, they would have corrected it or something, you would think. Mm -hmm. Everybody would notice these things in the past. So, yes. so the question is, why why did they leave it? They must have... They must have had some way they understood what what is being said there. Mm -hmm. We just don't have we don't have that information. So I have here um, Ahazia. So he's the son of uh, Jehoshaphat being born, and there's another son. Um, they're reigning at the same time, or not reigning at the same time, but. Another son of uh, Ahab is also called Ahazia, Ahazia at the same time, rough living together. So that's like a, the germ thing. You have, uh, can be quite confusing. But um, this is an Ahab's reign. So maybe uh, that's the fourth year of Ahab in 916. So this would be like nine years later. So this would be like his 13th year. And uh, I just thought it was interesting that you have the kings there, Jehoram being 18 and Jehoshaphat being 44. So you've like a symbol of 1844. And this is my guess for what maybe the year for Mount Carmel, because we know what happens around, uh, around some time in, in uh, Ahab's reign. Mount Carmel happens, and we have uh, First Kings eighteen forty four. You have that event of the, the little hand, like the size of a man's hand, sort of signifying the, the second coming. Uh, we know that eighteen forty four also signified the second coming. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so just a wee bit of speculation, and not to. <laughs> If I was going to guess it was the year of Mount Carmel, that would, I would go with that, you know, but I have no way of proving it. Mm -hmm. uh, I just I just thought it was... Uh, yeah, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, just a lot of numbers and information from the Bible um, about the kings here. So um, this is the, the period of the co-regency. So I put it down to 893 BC. Yeah. And then Jehoshaphat dies then two years later, age 60. Yeah, now the interesting thing about 893 BC is if you count back 151 years, uh, from uh, 742, it brings you to 893, if I remember correctly. Uh, yeah. So, you know, because people would always ask about this prophetic mirror dealing with the 126 years. But mm -hmm. if we go from 742, just like we can count um, 151 years to 2014, we can do the same thing with 742. So we just add the 151, and that brings us to 893. So to the end of Jehoshaphat's reign. Well, Jehoshaphat, he finishes in 891. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, but I mean, the day he, the year he dies, because I mean, he still kind of does reign um, for 25 years. Just two of those years are with Jehoram. Right. So he stops reigning in, or am I going backwards? Yeah. So he's going to die in 891, but Jehoram's going to begin reigning in 893, correct? Yeah, that's the way to do it. Yes. So, so the beginning of Jehoram's reign, the last two years of Jehoshaphat's reign. So that's the end of the 23 mm -hmm. years for Jehoshaphat. Okay, so um, this is the year Jezebel, I put down Jezebel, so there's a wee bit of a, it's quite difficult around that time, working out the, the years have to sort of dribble with these here, reigns and the, the uh, Cardinal counts of uh, ordinal counts and so forth that were given. Yeah, so they don't give us enough, enough information to nail it down mm -hmm. exactly. <clears throat> so uh, yeah, so this might need a. Well, there's another problem with the kings of Judah that I noticed. So the the assumption that was always made is that it'll say that a king reigns so many years that that means he dies in that year of his reign, right? So if it says a king reigned 25 years, then you assume, oh, well, he died in the 25th year of his reign. And that's mostly going to be true, but not always, because the number is just meant to add, be added up. So it's already rounded up or down for us. You know, because some kings may have a really short accession year, and others may have a much longer accession year. So, so to try to use those to nail down the year precisely can be difficult. So that was, so there's a little bit of the stretching here and there. So the fact that the Bible gives us a, a number of the years of rain that we can then total, we can know from the beginning to the end it's correct, but it's going to be hard to nail down some of these events to the year. You know, it might be a year off. So, um, Jehoram dies of sore disease. So, I think this is the uh, the king of the northern kingdom. It's hard to. <laughs> I'm not sure. Kingdom. It's the southern kingdom. Okay. And then uh, Ahaziah then takes over from him. Would that be right? Yeah. And, uh, there's a, he's 22 then when he begins to reign, and uh, Jehoram, he dies when he's 40. And then there's a wee, uh, two chronicles, 22 verse 2 says, he was 42 years old when he began the reign. So this would make him older than his father. Therefore, the 22 years of two kings, chapter 8, would be his age. So that's, uh, again, another passage which would seem to be a contradiction. Okay, yeah. I'm always confused here, too. I'm not sure if I said that right, even. Um, so go back there. So we got um, the verses there. Um, that's going to be 2 Kings 8, 25 to 26. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to have, yeah, Ahaziah is going to reign in Judah. And Jehoram is, so the 12th year of Jehoram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, did Ahaziah, the son of Jehoram, king of Judah, begin to reign, right? So Ahaziah is um, the king of Judah. So that's correct. Um. But it's just confusing because you have another Ahaziah who's also king of Israel. 
as well as the Joram and the Jehoram, which are sometimes switched around in their names. And that's going to be in that same period of time. So Joram, yes. the king of Israel, is, begins to reign in 896 and reigns for 12 years. So he's reigning at the same time that Joram, king of Judah, is reigning. And, and, and that's where it gets confusing. But then you also have um, uh, what was the name there? Ahaziah. So you yes, have so I have Jehoram reigning at uh, 897. You have him 896. Yeah. Yeah, I have him 896. So that would, that would have to be fleshed out some stage. Well, well, <laughs> well, the thing is I've worked it out as much in detail as I can, but but it's 896 or 897. There's just, there's no way to, to nail these down exactly okay. because of the way that they're counting, especially when they're changing uh, dynasties or dynasties. So, um, but you also have a Ahaz, Ahaz, what's his name? Um, a Ahaziah, right? You have an Ahaziah from 886 in Judah and an Ahaziah from 898 uh, in, in Israel. So sometimes, even though they're not reigning at exactly the same time, time it's easy to get them confused in some of the stories. So, mm -hmm. so that's where I, I and mean, I'm terrible with names. So, um, all these guys just all start with J or <laughs> or A or M. You know, yeah, so I have a, <laughs> yeah, I have a uh, a had Zaya in eight ninety eight, but you have them there at eighty six for the other a had Zaya. Yeah, and you have okay. them as. Yes. Eighty-five. Okay, yeah, and that's be in connection with a a Athaliah, who begins to reign. I have in eight eighty-five. Now, part of it is having to do. I'm actually marking accession years. Um, that's the other thing. So when I mark accession years, I'm not marking the first year of their reign. I'm marking when they began to reign. So I, I, in my okay. chart, I put an asterisk. If it's an accession year, mm -hmm. and uh, so maybe I shouldn't have done it that way, but that's the way that I did it. So that that can create some of the differences as well. Yeah. So I have uh, Athaliah the following year, then in eight eighty four, but then I run I run into a problem with Joash, um, kind of. I thought there it has a sort of um, like a, a sort of Joash seems to die in the second year. Of another, another Joash, that's another thing. Is there's two Joashes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it gets uh, quite confusing. So yeah. um, there it looks like he's 46 years here, but he says he. Um, he reigns 40 years and he begins to reign when he's seven. So I think that he reigns 47 years rather than 46. Yeah. Now I know people fo cannot follow what we're talking about. <laughs> it, it, it's pretty yeah. hard to keep track of all this, but you can see that we have worked this out. Hey, what's um, the it's on top? What's the what's the uh, green dates on top? Okay, so this is Anno Mundi. This is from the beginning of the world. Okay, that's the beginning of creation. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I was thinking, but I want not sure. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, and and I really, our dates aren't that much different. I just mostly mostly counting accession years as the year that they begin to reign. Um, so when it comes to Athaliah, I have 885, but really her first year of reign would be 884. So is that how you're counting, counting from the spring? 
I'm just trying to make the dates fit. Okay. Try to fit in years because. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Which, which you which you can see there's lots of uh, sort of you know people don't just die on the same day every year. You know when they end their reign, there isn't a specific day they die. So so that you're going to have that sort of uncertainty for some of the years of some of the kings specifically but it's the total that matters yeah so yeah. i did have a, a statement where i said it could be out a year or two it's hard to pin down yeah. the exact date yeah. especially, especially with the kings of israel it can be sometimes two years excuse, off um, excuse, excuse me please yeah hi mark Hi guys. Um, I am. Uh, I out. Uh, I uh, do agree. Uh, some some things I do agree with. Some things I do agree. Not with Green, you and Stephen. To say, uh, the uh, to have uh, to Jace, uh, they are different. To Jace, the first king, his reign is is over. God asked him to. Uh, he not died. Lord, keep him till he die in old, very old age. Okay. Very, very old age. Night of 50 years old. Okay. Okay, thanks, Mark. And other one, the of what it led me be very putting close to his heart, make him be next reign on his next new king. Okay. Hey, thanks. Okay, Stephen. Okay, so this is Jeroboam 2. Then begins to reign. I have him in the eight twenty three BC, and uh, it's during his reign that uh, Jonah mm -hmm. is a prophet, and uh, Amos records that there's uh, an earthquake as well mm -hmm. in his reign. So um, I think he reigns. Well, he's one of the longest reigning in the Southern Kingdom. So he yeah. Like the... yeah, he reigns 41 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, there, there's Jotham, and then this is uh, Zachariah. Now, you mentioned there's a period here when. There's an eleven year period. Yeah, because he begins to reign as as you you have the verse there, uh, chapter fifteen verse eight says the thirty eighth year of Azariah king of Judah did Zechariah the son of Jeroboam reign over Israel. So if you look at um, uh, here, which where is it? I'm just trying to see if I got this correct in my head. Um, So that's going to be Azariah. There is Uzziah, and yes. that's an eight ten. So Zechariah is going to begin reigning. Uh, Got to figure this out. Yeah. So you're going to have Jeroboam. There's forty one years for Jeroboam, and that's going to bring you to. Yeah, like uh, 780 
something like that when his reign ends? Well, I have 772. Okay, but that's that would be 50. Okay, you have 772. Yeah, that's about right. Uh, but that's going to be how many years? 772 to 823 when he begins to reign. So that's going to be 25, 20, uh, 58 years, something like that. So I have him reigning. Jeroboam reign two reigns 41 years, but the period of time is uh, 52 years between them is what I have. From, from Jeroboam, when he begins to reign in 723, then Zechariah begins to reign in 721. You have 722? Or 771, pardon me. 771. Yeah. So 823 to 771 is 52 years, but Jeroboam only reigns 41 years. So that means there's 11 years into reign in there. Correct? Yes, yeah, so I have him reigning at 823. BC. Yeah. yeah. I have that. So I'll have, okay, so then I have to do a, a bit of math here. Let me do it through. <laughs> so he, 723, and he says he reigns 41 years in 2 Kings 14 23. So 823 <clears throat> minus. You're going to have 51. Seventy-two. Yeah. Right. Okay. So mm -hmm. I have to fix that. That's a, okay. I'll just. Um, yeah. So you're gonna have to fix that. Yeah. So yeah. So there's the eleven years or ten. You have ten years as in interim. Um. Well, you you just didn't correct it there, but. Just give it a red color to yeah okay mm -hmm. yeah so it's not at the je death of jeroboam it's going to be 10 or 11 years later yes so thanks for i didn't see that oh yeah well you have the right year roughly you know 772 77 721 depending where in the year he dies right that's where you have the difficulty. Okay, so does Jeroboam still live until this time, but he's not winning then? Is that what you have it? No, Jeroboam, he... Jeroboam dies. There's just 11 years where there's no king in Israel. Right. Mm -hmm. So what's okay. happening near the end of northern Israel is they're having difficulty uniting northern Israel. So sometimes they'll talk about a king reigning in Gilead. Um, David does the same thing, actually. He reigns in Gilead for a while. And and that would basically be, um, they, they have part of Israel, but they're not able to unite all of Israel together. So until they unite Israel together, technically they don't have a king. And, and the same thing happens with Hoshea, because he kills Pekah, and then it's going to be nine years before he begins to reign. So there's just these two periods. Uh, I have them as an 11 year period, a, a nine year period. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So then we move on to Ahaz when he's born. And then um, Uzziah dies. So this is the time when in the year King Isaiah dies. Um, Isaiah sees the, the train of his temple, whatever the temples open up vision. Yeah. yeah, so Isaiah chapter six. Yeah. Hezekiah being born. And then um, I have here this year. Anarchy period. 
you can sort of maybe see it here, Hosea slaves Pekka, but then Hosea does rain. I, so I have it there maybe like eight years. Yeah. So you think I'll maybe be 739? You have it? Um, well, not so much. Um, it's just that, you know, eight years between is fine. It's just depending where in the year you're counting from. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So it's closer to nine years in my reckoning. But okay. just for, for my totaling of those years, um, I chose nine because I add them up as well to get 256 years. Um, mm -hmm. Because I have to count for the fact it's 256 years uh, from the death of Hoshi, Hoshia to uh, the, the dividing of the kingdom or from the dividing of the kingdom to the death of Hoshea in 721. So that's gonna be 256 years. So it's just how I count it based upon how long it says that a king reigns. So I know mm -hmm. it's it's not very precise, but that was the best I could do. So then 256 years uh, excludes the, uh, them, is it 20 years then of no reign? No, it includes those because I'm counting from 977 right to the death of Hoshea in 721. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. So if you count, count that, it's going to be 256 years in total. If you just added up the kings of Israel, you're going to be 20 years short. Right. Okay. I understand. Right. So. Uh, <laughs> Now, the, the 20th year of Jotham was something that uh, I have to update this because uh, you went through it one time in, uh, yeah. in the chronology. Um, but maybe just briefly, that uh, this was a story of gone from memory. I'd have to find it again and go over it. Well, well Jotham it. doesn't reign that many years, right? No. So, uh, so Jotham, who's the king of, of, of Judah, He's going to reign 16 years. So they refer to the to it as the 20th year of Jotham, even though it would be in the fourth year of Ahaz. Does that make sense? Now, now the question is, why do they do that? And and the reason that I have is rather a complicated one. It has to do with the changes that are happening in the reigns at that time. So the kings of Judah would have been reigning spring to spring. And, and I make an argument that in the reign of Ahaz, they begin a fall to fall count. So in order to be clear, they say it's in the 20th year of Jotham, showing that they're counting a spring to spring count instead of a fall to fall count. Does that make sense? Well, yes, yeah, so it's an argument anyway. Uh, yeah. That would help explain it. Yeah, there's no way to prove it. But the thing is, we run into a problem when we start looking at uh, Ahaz's reign in connection with Hoshea, in connection with Hezekiah, and, and the fall of Samaria. And, and we run into some interesting problems, especially with what Ellen White says when she talks about that Passover they have in the first year of Hoshea, or not Hoshea, Hezekiah. And she says it's two years uh, before Hoshea is taken captive. But Ho but when you, when you try to work it out, it doesn't work out. It's like Ellen White is counting uh, differently. So, so that means that Hezekiah's reign is being counted differently, that he's gonna have a fall to fall count for his reign rather than a spring to spring. But this is something that I've still been working on to try to solve the whole puzzle. But it's one of those things, it, there's just not a direct, simple solution to it. But I think that's why it refers to Hosea slaying Pekka in the 20th year of Jotham, instead of saying the fourth year of Ahaz. Hopefully that, you know, I, I have to work this out. I've been writing a paper on it, but I've, I've never finished because I keep getting caught up in other things. Yeah. And it's one of those things we have to resolve. 
because it really does affect what happens in 723 and 721. And um, so you're going to get to that right away. Yeah, so we also mentioned that uh, that study a few, a few months ago that uh, Ahaz was 11 years old when his son Zekiah was born. Yeah, yeah. And I have to fix it. I think this is Craig Jotham dies. And then I have here that, uh, yeah, dated as though Jotham was still reigning. Some reckon that this, yeah, some reckon that from this that Jotham continued to live after his son Ahaz began to reign. But uh, that wouldn't be correct. No, he dies. So Ahaz definitely dies. I mean, Johad, Jotham definitely dies before Ahaz reigns, before we count his reign in 742, mm -hmm. starting in 742. And then and there's other little problems I, I still have to work out. So uh, once I get the paper written, I'll send it to you, and then you can go over it, see if it makes sense. Okay, thanks. So 723, um, when Hosea, the seventh year of Hosea, and Samaria is besieged by Assyria. Yeah. Now, Ellen White says it's two years from the date that they have that Passover in the first year of Hezekiah before mm -hmm. the siege begins. So it looked there are three years. Yeah, it looks like three years. So that means um, Hezekiah, um, his reign is being counted different ways. So if Hezekiah is going fall to fall, so one of the one of the things we have problems with here is normally the kings of Judah were spring to spring until either Ahaz or Hezekiah. And, and, and I think it was during the reign of Ahaz that they changed to be fall to fall, just like the kings of northern Israel. But it, it, it talks about this too. It, it, when, it, when it talks about this these verses, um, so this is in 2 Kings. I'm just going to go there. Um, and this is going to be in... Chapter 18, I believe. Oh, yeah. So chapter 18, 2 Kings chapter 18, it says, It came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel. Now, this, this expression doesn't show up very often. That is, it, it, it doesn't say which was, the seventh year or whatever in other places. When somebody dies, it'll say in the year, the, the seventh year of somebody's reign. But here it says, which was the seventh year. And I go through and show other, the other places where this occurs, but it's quite clear that those mean that they're both counting their reigns uh, in the same fashion. So if you say that the, the fourth year of Hezekiah is the seventh year of Hoshea, that means they're both counting fall to fall at that period of time. So, so it is a little, little odd here how this is done. Yeah, that's a good insight. Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah. So there's a whole bunch of little details about this whole story that if that I need to put together in a paper. And, and I've started writing it, but it's like I'm not finished by any stretch of the imagination. So I'm, I'm pro about maybe halfway through. Okay, but yeah, so those are those are things that are are interesting details. At least still so we'll have here a bit about Harry Madsen and his article. Concerning the the twenty five twenty beginning beginning in seven twenty three, 
he notes that it was 19 years after Isaiah's prophecy. So he was using uh, Usher's date, 742, for when uh, that prophecy of Isaiah chapter 7. Yeah. 65 years was. And then uh, So we're familiar with that. And then 721 BC. Yeah. Uh, Great Controversy, page 308. Um, talking about the dark day. Rem says that it was the fulfillment of uh, what had taken place 2,500 years previously. Mm -hmm. uh, when the prophecy was that? given by Joel. Yeah, Mark. I did a search. Uh, did or did I did go? Uh, did or did said <coughs> I did go? Things of uh, the did or did said. They is said a different way. You yeah. know, get ready for I read it. Okay. The the single the single release by the sun. Only that's the high the single really by the said only that's the breakings and heart. Okay, thanks. Okay, Stephen? Yeah, so Joel begins the uh, second verse of chapter one. Hath this been in your days or even in the days of your fathers? So this is referring to the scattering of Israel by Assyria yeah. in the 721 BC. Mm -hmm. So this here uh, allows us to date Joel. There's no real indication within the book itself as to where it's referring to or as to where to place it. I've even seen some people place the book of Joel even after Malachi, you know, way in the 300s in the Grecian period. Yeah, or, I've seen that. Or late. But Ellen White's yeah, clearly so. saying it's 2,500 years, and and that's putting it pretty close to 25, 20 years. I mean, she's really giving a study on the 25, 20 for Northern Israel, but just in an indirect way. Yes, thanks. Yeah. So um, after the uh, so half year 713 BC, the 14th year of Hezekiah, this is when Sennacherib comes against the Finn cities and, um, and then uh, 185,000 Assyrians are slain and then Hezekiah is healed and then 15 years is added to his life. So he's He's yeah. going to live until he's 29. He reigns 29 years. Yeah. And then there's a prophecy that the people of Judah shall eat what is grown of itself that following year. And then people of Judah shall sow, reap, and plant vineyards to eat their fruits. And then there's a notice that Isaiah begins to walk naked and barefoot mm -hmm. this year for three years. Um, this is based upon the Ashod steel inscribed in honour of the victory of Sargon II over Ashod. So it's connected to a prophecy. Uh, I think it's uh, the reference there, Isaiah 20. I think it's when uh, Sargon then, in that year when Sargon defeats Ashod, 
that Isaiah begins this year walking barefoot for three years. Yeah. So, and then Manasseh is born uh, three years into his 15 years addition of his life. And uh, so he's 12 when he begins yeah. to reign and uh, Hezekiah dies and then he's uh, 33. So it would be like 21 years into his reign yeah. or so that uh, Manasseh is then taken captive and uh, he repents. And then the, that's the end of the 65 years of Isaiah. And we begin then the 2520 for southern Israel or Judah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a number of little things here. So one is um, Edwin Thiel's chronology. He doesn't have Hezekiah reigning until 10 years after Samaria is destroyed, which he puts in 723. So he's going to have Hezekiah beginning in um, 713 or something like that. And Mm -hmm. of course, that doesn't agree with the Bible at all. But a lot of times you'll see opponents of the 2520 talking about how Manasseh was only reigning 10 years when he was taken captive not realizing they're using Thiel's chronology and that that Thiel rejects uh, many of the scriptures. So they try to use that as an argument. Well, he reigned so long, whatever is it, 55 years, or I can't remember. How many years did he reign? 40? Oh, uh, Hezekiah? Yeah, 40 years? No, no, 29. 29 years? Okay, 29 years. Yeah, so they're trying to say, well, you know, if it was 10 years into his reign, that's way too early in his reign to have any effect. You, I'm talking about Manasseh, not not Hezekiah, Manasseh. Manasseh reigns 44 years? What does he reign? No, no, I think uh, 55. 50, so he reigns 55, okay. So, so, but it's 20 years into his reign or 21 years into his reign that he's taken captive not 10 years into his reign as opponents of the 2520 argue. So, and even though he repents, it doesn't, and his son's born after, it still affects his son because of the apostasy and the idolatry that exists in Judah. So his repentance didn't really stop um, the effects that were going to be, follow that the consequences of his apostasy still were felt even though he was converted. Well, then we have Josiah began to reign. Um, and then, um, so I have him begin to reign in 640. And then near fear, uh, he begins to seek after the Lord, and, uh, he's 16 then, and he has Jehoahaz, mm-hmm. and he actually has, he's quite, uh, Jeho- Jehoiakim was quite young when he was born to his father mm-hmm. as well, so yeah, it's quite a young age as well, Yeah, start having children, and then uh, we have the 12th year, 7628 begins to purge the idols and then we have the 13th year uh, where the word of the lord comes to jeremiah and jeremiah begins to uh, his real role as a prophet but then we all we there's the idea with the these 40 years of ezekiel chapter 4 that they actually go to this year year 627 and uh, this the idea then that this year, purging of idols of Judah and Israel. Yeah, you should, put, you should put the beginning of the purging of, uh, of the idols. Mm-hmm. He begins to purge Judah and Israel of the idols. Because he doesn't do it all in that year. Yeah, so I think, does it, I think it actually says it in that year. 
Yeah, it, it does say he begins. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, we, do, we will cover, go into this here a bit more detail later. Okay. Um, so I have here Daniel being born in 623. Um, Ellen White says that uh, Daniel was youth when he was carried away captive into Babylon. He was about 15 or 16 years old for he is called a child, which means that he was in his youth. So uh, could be maybe 622 uh, as well, because she's, she's not, she's saying like 15 or 16. Yeah. So he could have been actually born in the year of this Passover. Mm -hmm. Which may have be, maybe be a bit more significant. Mm, possibly. Have to, or, else, or else he was born in the, the year the Bible of the law was found. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can work out that Josiah's reign is going from fall to fall through this year period. There's a Yeah, through the title thing, I have it, but he works out that uh, you can uh, see that this is for the fall to fall, whatever, when we look into the end passages. Yeah, because, well, because uh, of the, uh, the finding of the book of the law and the preparation that they have for the Passover. Yes, in the same year of his reign, isn't it? The 18th year. Oh, that's right. I have there. Yeah. The 18th year. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it has to be a fall to fall reign. Mm -hmm. Now, Floyd Nolan Jones, who's a, a chronologist, he tries to argue that it's it's spring to spring and that they get all this stuff done in that period of time. Uh, but uh, it, it's definitely not possible. It has to be a fall to fall reign. Mm -hmm. So there's a quote there, LMA just confirms that he's 20 years old when uh, it's his 12th year. Okay. That's good. So then we have Zedekiah, Jehoiachin <laughs> being born, and then uh, Josiah being slain, or uh, Baal Megiddo. And then Jehoahaz, he's king for three months. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Ellen White says that he was 39 when he met his met death in battle. So that's yeah. Prophets and Kings, page 405. Now, so she's saying it, and it's more than, what's the, what's the quote says there? It's more than 10 years? More, more, than, a more than a decade following the celebration of the Passover. Yeah, so. It would be really like 13 years. Yeah. yeah. And then um, we're not told how old Jehoah has was when he died, but he went down into Egypt. And then we have 607. Well, that mentions that uh, Jehoiachin was eight years old, eight or nine, whatever. Well, I think it's uh, eight. in that year, but, but he was eight years old then when he uh, begins to reign. Yeah. When he's anointed. When he's anointed, but he's not. And that would be in the fall of 607. Mm -hmm. So he would have turned nine, you know, sometime in December, I figure. Uh, okay. Because he's going to be 18 when he begins to reign in 598. And so if he's going to be 18... That means he has to just turn nine, nine soon after he's anointed. A short time after, a month or two. Mm -hmm. 
And then 605, I have the fourth year of Jehoiakim, first year of Nebuchadnezzar, and the 23rd year of Jeremiah's prophesying. Yeah. Yeah, so the fourth year of Jehoiakim would begin in the spring of 605. And then Nebuchadnezzar's reign begins in the autumn. Actually, it's fall. Pardon me, that would be in the fall. So, um, yeah, so Jehoiakim's reign is going fall to fall. So when we talk about 606 BC, people will often say he's taken captive 606 because the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim goes from the fall of 607 to the fall of 606. So the fourth year goes from the fall of 606 to the fall of 605. But Nebuchadnezzar's reign is going spring to spring. So, so I have like a combination of the fourth year of Jehoiakim and the fifth year of Jehoiakim. So the fourth year, then Barak writes the words of Jeremiah and rule. And then it's the fifth year when uh, he think he, he cuts them up in the, with a pen knife. But then I think it lasts in the winter. So I have to, I don't know if that's right. Okay, so I don't think that's right. So his fourth year is going to go, it's going to end in the fall of 605. Right, it's going to bring begin in the spring of 606. Uh-huh. And then right, in okay. 605. So the fourth year of his reign is in 605. So that would have to change. That would have to go into the 605 one. And then it mentions in the fifth year mm -hmm. that uh, Barak then writes the words on a, on a fast day in Jerusalem. So what fast day would that be? I don't know, maybe uh, mm -hmm. it's the winter time then when Jehoiakim cuts up the book with a knife. Yeah. So this it could well still be in 605. Could be. So that might make change possibly as well. Yeah, we just don't know which fast day it is exactly, whether it's just um, like a monthly fast day, it could be too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so, when we count, so when we count the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, so just to make this clear, so we know that Nebuchadnezzar, his father dies in 605. And so the first year of Nebuchadnezzar's reign is the spring of 604. But often when it talks about the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, um, it doesn't, it, they often include the accession year as the first year so so the first year of nebuchadnezzar is technically longer than than a year <laughs> so that includes the accession year yeah so sometimes not all the time but sometimes they'll refer to the first year of a reign um but they they're including the accession year even though technically it's it's not his first year. So when Nebuchadnezzar begins to reign, it's going to be in like August when his dad dies of 605. And um, so, but technically in the spring of 604, because it mentions this at the Akitu festival, he, he becomes king. He actually officially becomes king. That's like his inauguration. You know, like when Trump is inaugurated, that's going to be, on the first day of the first month of the Kitu festival. So, so, but they're going to often talk about the first year of the, of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, including his accession year. And so that creates confusion for people because we often just, you know, this is just a colloquial way of saying things. You know, you're not going to talk about his accession year. You just don't do that. 
right? You just say he began to reign that year. That's his first year of reign, even though technically it's not. But people just generally would look at it that way. So he's he be, officially begins to reign there in the spring of six oh four. Right. So that's when he yeah that's when his accession year ends because but his dad has been dead for you know more than half a year or about a half a year when he begins to reign a little bit over half a year uh so but but still they will say he's it's he it's the first year of his reign even though technically you'd have to wait till the spring to to do that i i know it gets really confusing for people but you can just show lots of examples where this happens and even when he when he takes over when he takes daniel captive for instance he's technically not even the king right he takes daniel captive he's the crown prince yes so so um you know so people have trouble with that they say well it says the king of, of babylon right nebuchadnezzar king of babylon well he's technically not the king of babylon he's the prince the crown prince but he does become the king of babylon you know so you just re refer to him uh, in the past in the past just like you could talk about you know president trump when he was uh you know back in in the 90s well he wasn't president trump in the 90s but you could still refer to him as president trump referring to things that he did long before he was uh, made president and the same with nebuchadnezzar mm -hmm. okay so i have the the dream mm -hmm. he completes his three years in the babylonian court in 603 yeah and uh, he has that dream then of the of the image of the metal and he's 20 years old at that time yeah and darius the Mede is born years later and we have these here the seventh year of nebuchadnezzar he takes jews captive and then uh, jerusalem's besieged the following year and that is the eighth year okay so and this is, this uh, is so this again is one of those areas that's a little bit confusing because we know that his eighth year begins in the spring of 597 and he began his siege, according to the Babylonian Chronicles, in his seventh year, right? So it's actually when he puts um, Zedekiah on the throne, and they even mention this in the Babylonian Chronicles, by the way, um, that he puts Mataniah on the throne um, and changes his name to Zedekiah, that that's going to be after the first day of the first month. But he's going to break down the walls of Jerusalem and take Jehoiachin captive in March. So on March 16th in 597, um, he captures Jerusalem, but he doesn't put Zedekiah on the throne and, until later in the spring. That's the second day of Adar. Okay. Right. So, yes. so it's talked about the seventh year of his reign. So he's obviously taking Jews captive um, prior to putting Zedekiah on the throne. Yes. So I could probably put these here to 597 BC early. Yeah, that's that's what I would say. So this is 597. This is before the first day of the first month. And then the next part in the eighth year of his reign is still 597, but just later in the spring. Mm -hmm. Now it says Jehoiachin is taken captive to Babylon. Um, but he obviously he was taken captive before that in the seventh year of Nebuchadnezzar but he probably wasn't carried to Babylon yet. So there's he will be, I don't know for certain. He yeah. will be a spy on them. He, he, will, he did 
these by on them, then caught him, put him in the jail. Yeah, they put him in jail. Jehoiachin was put in jail. Yeah. For 36 years. Okay. So I think we probably should stop there, Stephen. Everyone wants to sleep. <laughs> but also, uh, but also, um, well, it's 3.30. Um, but we're going to come back and go over some of this stuff dealing with the Babylonian captivity and and the end of Zedekiah's reign. Now, how, how much more do you have, pages more do you have in your chronology? You have some charts, right? Well, this is just the kings are you talking about? Yeah, the kings, just dealing with the kings, because we're almost to the end of the kings, but you're still going to yeah. We're still going to deal with the prophecy of Zechariah, or not Zechariah, Ezekiel, and and so forth, right? So you're going to go through that. Yeah, so that basically covers uh, and then of a few diagrams, which those are all connected to Ezekiel four. Okay. And then uh, just as a timeline of Josiah at the end. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so there's only maybe like another couple of rows of, of that tables. Okay. Before, before we finish. Okay, but we'll finish that next week then. Yes, and then okay. go on to the Ezekiel one. Yeah, okay. Is it not next week? It's maybe two weeks? Yeah, two, two weeks. Pardon me. I always do that. Yeah, in two weeks. Okay. So if you want to close with prayer. Okay. Uh -huh. Dear Heavenly Father, we thanks for your help in working out this chronology. We know it can be a bit uh, tedious considering the dates and working out the reigns, Father, but uh, we know that it's in your word and it's, if it's in your word, it's worthy of our study and putting our mind to. We pray that uh, the blessing come for those who seek to understand these things and to study. and. Um, we pray that uh, we can uh, complete this here chronology to your glory and um, may it be used as a source of light to those uh, in this here world that are seeking for the truths of your word. We ask these things in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.